Today, we're sitting down with Greg Anderson with Movement Mortgage. Greg is the best lender here in our market and the only lender that I recommend to my clients. And you can always count on him to wear the freshest pair of J's. And we wanted to give you all an update on what's going on with interest rates. There's been lots of noise for the last two years, it seems like. I know this year, a lot of buyers were hoping to see some rate drops to get some relief. Uh, and the Fed kind of just kept putting it off, putting it off. Sounds like we might get a rate drop at the end of the year. So Greg, could you just give us a high level overall summary of where the market is today and what do you expect will happen with the interest rates and people's ability to purchase a home before the end of the year? Yeah, so uh, going back, right, the Fed said at the end of last year that they predicted three rate drops in 2024. Of course, the market then, and they doubled that and they, they got to a point where they were predicting five to six. Um, and so we know that that is all kind of unraveled, right? So as immediately when they said they were going to drop three times, rates went from 8%, uh, a little over 8% in October of 23, down to in the six and a half range. But then as things have gone on, rates have, have gone up as the uh, market is no longer predicting those three rate increases. Um, so you're now running right around 7%. We've hit as high as seven and a half this year. Um, I think at this point in the political cycle, we are so close to an election. I really think that at this point, they're going to try to hold as much as, as they can. Maybe they'll have one rate increase that could even happen after the, the election. However, if you're paying attention to what the Fed governors are saying, so each individual Fed governor, you know, has, they'll have their own press conference, right? And so when they're being interviewed right now, they're starting to point to weakness in the economy. And that's really what we want for lower uh, rates, right? They use PCE. I know CPI is always something that gets reported, but the Fed uses PCE. PCI report came out today. So we're filming this on June 28th. Um, and it came out today and it came out lower than it has been in quite some time. So uh, you have to go back two years to get um, where, you know, rates actually take that back. You have to go back three years to get to where um, PCE was this low. So the year over year right now is 2.6 okay. on that inflation. Remember the Fed's target is 2%. So we're heading in that direction, right? The Fed also wants to see things like they want to see weaker jobs reports. Weaker jobs reports or higher unemployment signifies weakness in the economy. A lot of people say, Greg, or why does the Fed want the economy to be weak? Well, because when we're in a point of higher inflation, that's because everything is going along. People are making more money. So companies charge more for their goods. When the economy is struggling, companies have to lower the price of their goods, maybe commodities come down in price, housing, there's just a lot of those factors uh, that will come down in price as the economy weakens, right? Got it. So that will help inflation. So it's no you know, secret, you go to the grocery store now and you don't get out of the grocery store for much less than a couple hundred bucks, even if you just go to get stuff for dinner. Uh, cause it's very expensive right now and they do look at the, at food, but they also realize that can be very volatile food and gas is, are two very volatile things. Um, and you know, housing, housing is a big piece, right? And how's, I saw this meme that just, I just thought of that said, my gas station bill is looking more like my grocery bill. My grocery bill is looking more like my Costco bill. My Costco bill is looking more like my mortgage, right? Which I thought was a pretty good, yeah, encapsulation of, of what the overall most people here in our country are dealing with. So you mentioned we're in a specific, we're approaching the presidential election uh, now. All over the news, I mean, the presidential debate was yesterday, and it was circus. I, I don't know. I'm sure you have an opinion about it, but it was an interesting thing to watch. So how would you say? And I guess you kind of partially answered. I don't know if you want to add to it, but you said that you think maybe now the Fed and everybody can want to keep things steady until we get past it. And that's why maybe they are hinting a potential decrease in rates in November or December. Or do you think there's going to be, or will they try to stimulate the economy a little bit to make it look like things are better than they are in anticipation of the election? Or what do you think role or impact does the upcoming election have 
as it pertains to the mortgage rates? Well, I think at this point, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not big. I, honestly, I don't pay attention to politics all that much. I pay attention to the economy. Greg didn't even um, watch the debate, so we just showed him <laughs> clips about them arguing about the golf handicap. <laughs> Which I wish I would have seen that. I'll go watch the golf clip. Um, just because, you know, for, for my own, you know, reasons, I think a lot of it is just fluff and doesn't right. really matter. But I, I do think that um, the Fed is trying to stay non-political. Right. And that's really, really hard. I mean, we all know that that they are um, political in some ways, but I think right now they're just trying to stay out of the fight. Right. And stay out here just doing their thing. I don't see them at this point. We're so close. I mean, we're only, what, four months away from the election at this point in time. Um, and so I don't see them really doing anything you know, to try to change anybody's opinion about the economy. Uh -huh. So I, at this, if they were going to do that, they would have started doing that at the end of last year, earlier this year. But now we're at a point where, you know, it is what it is. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if in future conversations and debates, we don't get some vilification of Jerome Powell and the Fed. And, you know, people, you know, probably um the the challenger taking the approach of you know look at the fed they're hurting you blah 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 you know just because that seems to be the mo there right um so i don't i wouldn't be surprised if we saw that um but i don't think jerome powell is going to do anything based on that at this point in time so i don't see rates coming down much uh they they could come down you know half a percent or something like that but so so let me ask you this. So for most people, there's a lot of discussion and where the whole industry is waiting on what the Fed's going to do. And when the Fed drops the Fed rate, that kind of trickles down into mortgage rates, the credit card interest rates, the cards, payments, everything else. Right. So that's what people are paying attention to. So what and we usually see it's either a quarter of a point or a half of a point. Can you talk about how does that do if there is a direct correlation. How does that translate? So if the Fed rate comes down a quarter point, let's say end of the year, yeah. do you think how will that impact the rates? Will the rate mortgage rates also drop from seven to six and three quarters? Or is it more about the anticipation of what they will do in the near future, how they will fluctuate? So what would be your, that's a big question, but also what would be your prediction after all that, what the rates would be at the end of the year if and when the Fed drops it by a quarter, let's say. Yeah, so really, really, I think good news is the the market is based on, mortgage rates are based on the purchase and sale of mortgage-backed securities, okay? So that's a speculative market. Whenever you're buying a bond or a stock, you're speculating what is going to happen in the future, okay. right? So if the Fed is cutting, that is going to be a really the first cut when they come out and they have their minutes and they talk about why they decided to cut that they're going to give clues of what they're going to do in the future. Okay. okay. So, so if that indicate people, that they're going to continue, they feel yeah. comfortable with inflation. And if they, this is the first cut and if it continues to trend this direction and we don't see a jump in CPI, they'll continue to cut. And so therefore then it's, it's possible to hope for or predict that even if the cut, let's say is by a quarter, we might see the rates in the six and a half range or something like that if the future is promising. Right. Yeah. So if the, if the market can say, hey, we are going to see future cuts beyond just this one quarter percent, which which is what will happen. The other thing that people don't know is there the normal spread between the 10 year treasury and the 30 year fixed mortgage is one point seven five to two percent. OK, currently we are at four point two five on the 10 year treasury. So if you take that normal, say 2%, we should be at six and a quarter on the 30 year fixed. So that spread, it has also been elevated because the investors of those mortgage backed securities at current rates like seven, seven and a half, they know those loans are gonna get paid off faster. So they aren't gonna get as much income from those investments. So they, they basically, you know, won't buy them at what the rates should be because they know they're going to get paid off. So as soon as the Fed starts cutting, I think you will see investors start jumping in and start predicting that, hey, we're going to see lower rates. So I'm going to go grab this mortgage-backed security that gets me this high yield, right? Okay. So, and then for what I find by working with buyers and sellers, again, most people are either 
everyone's challenged, the buyers are challenged by the high rates because it just translates into a much higher mortgage payment. And we know we've already talked in previous videos about buy downs or ways to combat that. But ultimately still, I see that buyers who are able to afford a higher rate today, I think most of them understand that when the rates start coming down, they'll also directly reflect in the home prices jumping back up. Yep. So I kind of sense a sense of urgency from the buyers to try to get into something. And again, there's other challenges. There's not a lot of inventory. They can't find the perfect house. So all those things are, but what would you say are some recommendations or strategies for people who are ready, or maybe they don't like the rate and they were not excited about the payment that they would get, but they are financially in a position to make the move now about making it in anticipation of the prices going up. But then there's also, I guess, the counter argument to that, that when the rates are coming down, we think that maybe more sellers will see the prices jumping and more inventory will unlock. So it also kind of, it will give buyers more options at a higher price, but at a lower rate. So it seems like a lot of what I find a lot of people are just uncertain and they're waiting to see how it plays out. And oftentimes if you wait and wait and wait and don't pull the trigger, at the end it might be a, you might be paying a lot more for a house that you could possibly get today if you're able to afford it with the higher rates. Right, so we have unprecedented low inventory right. and we have rates that we haven't seen in, you know, almost 20 years, right? So those two things are what's making everybody kind of freak out right now, right? So I agree with you, and I think most experts do agree with you that as rates come down, the inventory will tighten, okay? And the reason for that is, is it's estimated that for every 1% that rates go down, 5 million more buyers qualify, right? So remember, the highest population group in this country is millennials. They're all buying their first homes right now. Okay. So if you're buying your first home, that means you, you have a new job. Probably, you know, you may be only a few years out of college. You may not have a lot of money saved up. So rates at 7% might just be too prohibitive. Right. But if they go to 6%, then they're going to be able to jump in. They all want to own homes. Right. This idea that people are going to rent forever is just BS. It's not going to happen, right? Um, the other factor that we have is we don't have like in our area, because we don't have a lot of inventory, we have a whole bunch of people, baby boomers, who are sitting on houses they don't even owe anything on, but they don't have anywhere to go, right? right? And so we're helping people with two things. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, those people who are first time buyers, they have to qualify for the high rate. So you still have to qualify at 7% or whatever the rate is, but the two one buy down has been very popular because if you can go in and you can negotiate with the seller because they don't have any other offers, that's a great way to ease your way into that payment. Because over those two years, a couple of things are gonna happen. One, most people that are first time buyers will get raises every year. Right. So their income's gonna go up. The other thing that will likely happen is they will be in a position to refinance. Right. And with those temporary buy downs, when you refinance, if there's any money left in that, you know, what you paid for the temporary buy down, you get a refund. So you don't lose that money. Okay. So you're just prepaying basically. You're, you're prepaying. So if if the seller is paying for it, right. you know, if you're going in and asking the seller for 20000 less on their price, but you could use that 20000 for a buy down, you're going to save more money doing the buy down and it's going to help your budget and in easing into that higher interest rate. And if rates do come down as we anticipate, then it's possible the never will actually pay the payment at that highest rate. Got it. Right. Okay. The other piece. So the other piece is the people who are sitting in the house and they owe very little or they owe nothing. We're helping them with a bridge loan okay. so that they don't have to sell their house, try to be contingent and move. A lot of those baby boomers have been right. in their house for 30, 40 years. Right. And so we all know you accumulate things. Maybe, you know, you have some maintenance you need to do or whatever right. before you can get your house on the market. And so we're helping them move, get into this new house, get settled. And then they have this, the option to sell their home. Once they sell their home, they can either pay down that mortgage, pay it off. We have different solutions for that as well. Got it. Okay. Well, there you have it. I think it's 
it's encouraging. That sounds like today's report is encouraging that for the, it's probably the first time, right? When the CPU, when the numbers came in below as expected. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the first time, but what's been happening is it's been a little choppy, right? So right. We'll, we'll get one month where it's better and then we'll get two months where it was a little worse than expected. So it's not, it's, it's not going 100% in the right direction, but it is definitely helpful. Got it. So there you have it. This was actually very informative and encouraging for me, because again, there's lots of talk and we, I think you kind of tune out that all the promises that the rates will drop because we were promised four to six drops this year and not a single one happened yet. But now that the economy seems to be closer to where the Fed wants it, we are, it, I think it's reasonable to expect that they will start lowering rates end of the year and then we'll see what happens next year. So my recommendation to you is if you're thinking about wanting to purchase a home in the near future, end of this year, sometime next year, it's always very helpful. It doesn't cost you anything to speak with a professional to understand your specific situation. And I firmly believe that even though the inventory is limited now, but if you do find the perfect house and if you are in a position to buy something sooner than later, I think you'll look back in the year or two years or three years and you'll have gained an incredible amount of equity because the prices will continue to shoot up. Uh, and again, if you wanna understand what those options are, Greg is the man to talk to and he'll be able to answer your questions that are specific to you and your situation. So thank you, Greg. Any parting words of encouragement for us? And for the people out there about yeah. mortgage rate? Yeah, I, I still think like this is a great opportunity, like you yeah. said, to get into a home, um, even investment homes. I have some of my investors are jumping on it because they're looking down the line a year or two and they're saying, okay, I can get a great price right now and then I can get that payment lower here in the future. So there's people who are acting. If you are on the sidelines, at least get a plan together for when you can buy because right. you're going to get left in the dust, I think, over the next decade if you don't uh, pay attention to this. There you have it. I couldn't agree more. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any other questions for me or Greg, just drop them in the comments. And otherwise, we'll be sure to give you another update soon.